Well, wasn't that a meltdown? Crazy stuff. That's more than just a panic sell-off, though. I'll have to look in the filings. You know when uh, Fubo did that restructuring deal with, was it Mudrick Capital? I hate them bastards. There's always some kind of a little catch in there. That's the reason why they do it. So, and the market maker probably knew it. Like I say, I have to read it and see, but, you know, if the price falls between a certain point, then they can sell those shares before the expiration date. Like they had, they moved it out to 2026 or something like that. But if the price falls down a certain amount, they can sell them right away. So, and that's probably what that was. But you can almost bet that a few people that were short covered and now they'll go long. So I expect to see this gap uh, fill in here back up to this 250. I mean, how long is it going to take? Who knows? Because the market maker is going to work the hell out of it. But you know, you have stuff like this, then you you know, the market maker will move it down first thing in the morning like that because there was, it was down 50 cents. There was only like, I don't know, 40, 40 some thousand shares. That That's crazy. That's just intentional, you know, beat down. But in order to do that, see, I mean, it would throw up a whole bunch of red flags if you didn't have that stupid ESPN news, which is just retarded to think that that would cause it to drop that much, being as though that ESPN deal, they didn't even have package pricing or release date or nothing like that. So it was just an excuse, a little shadowing of the movement they just made here. So it didn't throw up a bunch of red flags. They can use that for an excuse. Because if this just dropped like that and there was nothing going on, you know, it would throw up so many red flags. The SEC would have to look into it and people would be bitching. And I mean, not, not that they're going to do anything because it's the SEC, you know. And one hand washes the other. So, yeah, it's just a, it's a big farce. I mean... All these guys are working together. So Mudrick Capital probably knew what was going on and the market maker was in on it and shorts are in on it and it's all one big coordination effort there. But this is probably going to be a little blessing in disguise because this will probably be a reversal. And hopefully, you know, with, with earnings and Fubo pulled something out of their hat. But yeah, it's definitely, like people were saying, it's definitely a great buying opportunity. I mean, there isn't, there isn't much chance of this being lower. Very, very slim. You know, unless they dilute or something, but I don't, I don't foresee that happening. They already restructured their, their debt. So they're all set for this to bounce back up. I mean, this is a $10 stock all day long, with, with, without a doubt. So, I mean, this is just an absolute no-brainer to, to grab this at under $2. I mean, even at $2 or a little above, that's, it's just a no-brainer. I know I, I'm grabbing contracts as much as I can because I can set them way out and they're dirt cheap right now it's just crazy interesting move though that's for sure have to pay attention to what happens here the next next few days and next week you know going into this earnings if they have a decent earnings it's going to get crazy but yeah I mean can you imagine you know this this drop you know 57 cents or so I mean, it hit stop losses and P 
people panicked, sold. It, it was just played right. At, shorts are just laughing. You know, you get this is their. This is you know like Ken Griffin. If you go back, it's really old videos. You'd have to do some searching, but Ken Griffin with Citadel, he talks about how he brings on uh, psychologists and stuff on his team. And basically, they, they analyze the thinking of retail trading. So they're always one step ahead. You know, like if, if we do this or if we do that, you know, retail is going to, you know, they it's just, they have it all planned out. It's all psychology, you know. They're like, like for instance, the market makers stretching it out. They stretch it out so long, and institutions even they stretch it out so long that the retail trader gets bored, and then a little bit of a dip, and they panic sell. And this has been, and it's changed over the last couple of years because of social media and stuff. But this has been the thing that retail has done for decades is they'll they'll buy it say mid range price it starts to get up they get greedy they don't sell it the floor drops out they panic sell for a loss and then when it starts running they buy it back from these market makers and institutions higher than what they had sold it for. And, and it's just, and they do it over and over and over again. When, I, I don't trade stocks anymore, so I'm just playing options, but when I was day trading, you know, I never sold for a loss. Never. I always bought a certain amount so that every time the price dropped, I could buy a little bit more and average down, average down, average down. And I would never sell for a loss. So, now it, you got to, how do I explain this? You got to know the stocks that you're putting your money into. So, like for instance, if you're in a, you know, $200 stock. Now, obviously, there's a long ways for that to go. So I always played in the like penny stocks and you say under two bucks or under five bucks or whatever. Just because for instance, like Fubo here. Fubo is not going anywhere. It's always going going to exist. So right now, you know, even let's say even if it was at three bucks, you know, I go back to that tape measure thing. Look at where it's been. And how far down can it go? It can't go down far enough to not take that risk. So even if it was at $3, I'd buy X amount of shares. You know, say my biggest thing was like 20,000 shares. So I'd buy 20,000 shares. And if it went down, I'd buy, you know, 2,500 more, 2,000 more, 1,000 more. They keep going down. I just keep buying, keep buying, keep buying. And eventually that skyrockets and you sell it off and you make a profit. You never sell for a loss. So, and you know, other, other people tell you to set a stop loss and that's, that's a smart thing too. Because if you got a profit, when it starts going down, you can sell for, you know, your stop loss will trigger. You made a profit. That, that's a smart play, too. It's just a choice, eh? It's a choice you got to make. <clears throat> but I, I just don't like the whole, you know, wash sale thing, you know? So, well, we'll see what happens with this tomorrow. Maybe I'll make another video Monday. And keep an eye on it. Buy this up. It's a smart buy right now. Don't listen to me though. Don't. It's just my opinion. This is a good buy point. Anyway, have a, have a good weekend.